everyone. Welcome to another episode of Transformation Time. Every Thursday, I host an episode of either Transformation Time or Re Behind the Scenes. My name is Diana Lizarazzo, and today's guest speaker is Suman Chakraborty. And on Transformation Time, our guest speakers are real estate investors. And they share with us their, they're going to sh share with us their personal development journey and mindset shifts that they've gone through to get to where they are today uh, as an entrepreneur and as a real estate investor. Also, we're going to be getting to hear about what are they doing right now, what changes they're making right now to hear, uh, to know where they're going in the future to get to the goals they're getting to the future. So if you guys are ready, Let's give Suman some thumbs up, some heart. Let's send him some love and I'll bring him on. Uh, let me check if it uh, worked. Oh, there we go. There we go. Hey, hey. Suman, how are you? Good, good. Can you hear me? I can, yes. Okay. I'm how have you been? Good, good. How are you doing, Diana? Good, good. Let's start with just giving the viewers a a little telling the viewers a little bit about yourself like what kind of real estate investor are you you know what's your experience like anything you'd like to share with the audience yeah sure so uh, my journey in real estate investing started in end of 2020 so i came to canada in 2019 on a work permit and then got the permanent residence in 2020 and that's where i decided to invest in education in real estate and uh, fr from there in 2021 i got my first property and since then i have scaled to a portfolio of 28 units in north america with my partners uh, which is close to about 4.4 million dollars portfolio and i've also you know been fortunate enough to raise capital uh, close to 1 million dollars with jv partners and investors that's a Amazing. That's great to hear. So let's get started with the beginning. So, because uh, you said you came here in 2019, right? Yes. So did you have any, before coming here, did you have any uh, influence about real estate or anything that before even coming to Canada? Disconnected. Can you please repeat again? Sorry no, about that. Problem, no problem. I was just saying that, uh, before coming to Canada, yeah. did you have any influences from people about getting into real estate or was that something you had seen before coming to Canada? Right. So I had a couple of properties back in India, but uh, I would say like not as a real estate investor. It was more of a belief that, you know, uh, I always thought if you put money in real estate, it always grows, but that's not the case. So uh, those were just traditional ones. So technically, before coming to Canada, I had no experience. Uh, and that's why, you know, I, but I, I knew the power of real estate that, you know, all these wealthiest people, they somehow are connected to real estate. Uh, so I decided to invest in the education and get started. So before coming, no. Uh, and after coming here, getting the permanent residence, I started, uh, you know, investing in real estate. And so then once you got here, then what, it, what happened for you to start thinking uh, to get involved in it, to start as soon as you did? Because even I feel like uh, coming here in itself, I feel like that's a venture on its own, let alone now adding on, like plus, you know, getting a job and now adding on, you know, being a, a try, like learning about investing in real estate. So what even got you just thinking about it so soon or and getting involved with it so soon. So the job itself uh, is was my answer, right? Like, as you rightly said, uh, even before the real estate started, there were so many challenges, you know. I was solely dependent on the work permit and the project that I'm working on. And there have been times where I suddenly lost project, you know, they had to ramp down or the organization changed. And my sole focus was again getting back uh, project so you know this happened two three times 
So then I realized that mm-hmm. only having the job is not enough. You know, you need to start putting extra effort uh, in the evening, early morning to start building your portfolio because these assets are here to stay. And it reduces the dependency on just one stream of income. Uh, so that was my whole purpose of uh, starting my journey in real estate. Mm-hmm. That's a great point because I think it's really interesting how um, a lot of us that aren't in real estate or even don't think about just investing at, at all or very minimal um, put a lot of weight on our job. But it, it our job in itself is actually... Uh, if that's like our only sole sole source of income, it is quite risky if you think about it. Because like that, if you lose your job, and uh, you know <laughs> that could that could give us problems, right? So it is. I wanted to just highlight that because that is very important to kind of understand that even if let's say we're not, you're not going to go full time into it or anything, but having you know at least like one or two properties there, you know, is something good to have. Because um, just having your job, I feel like I personally think, and as you were saying, even I feel like you also think it, it is a bit, it, it is risky on its own too. Exactly. Like the biggest risk I feel is not doing anything, you know, not taking any risk at all. Because mm-hmm. but there are few things which are not in our control, like, you know, inflation, mortgage interest, right? Mm-hmm. So we have to constantly do something which will make sure that it is going beyond the inflation or something which is winning the race for you. So mm-hmm. that is extremely important. Only saving uh, is not going to help any one of us. Saving is a good thing, but investing uh, is a better approach. 100%, yeah. And I think it's like everything. Everything has a risk, right? Exactly. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you're going. Everything has a, has a risk and it's just trying to find those ways that work for us. So now getting into your uh, uh, projects and just getting into real estate, what have you noticed in yourself that you, like, actually, no, before we get to that question, sorry, let's start with, like, what skills did you adopt from your past of working and whatever your past that you felt that helped you to be able to become a, uh, or use those skills to become a real estate investor. Right. And, and uh, that that's a very good question because many people, you know, who are just starting out, uh, who reach out to me for some of the queries, uh, you know, they ask me one thing that, you know, we are not having any real estate knowledge, you know, so they feel that they cannot contribute. Whereas I tell them that, you know, your entire life, of course, real estate core knowledge is one aspect which you can invest in a good educational program and get it. But there are certain traits which you pick up through your work experience, education, life experiences that you can help. Now, in my case, uh, because I work in a corporate world, so I'm into like uh, the IT side, the technology and the management side. So we deal with a lot of uh, people. We have to interact with senior leadership, uh, have multiple strict timelines, uh, those kind of things. So few skills that has helped me. And again, I just want to tell to all your audience members that you don't have to wait to be perfect or the best. You know, I'm about average or average in majority of the skills. So don't wait for anything. So in my case, it is uh, some of the communication aspects, you know, even though English is not my first language and that's okay, you know, no matter where we are, just communicate your ideas and improve from there on. So communication skills help me. Uh, second is uh, because of my work, uh, I used to put a lot of hours in my project. I can stretch myself a lot. So that has helped me in balancing my full-time job and doing real estate on the side. Uh, The third thing is the networking. So networking, I'm a big believer of networking. So I invest uh, three to four hours a day, uh, you know, either networking with people, helping people resolve their queries. So that builds value. So, you know, giving back to the people is extremely important. So these are some of the skills I feel I have picked up. 
so up uh, i've not just also talked about real estate investing right so these skills together combined with your real estate knowledge uh, makes you a better real estate investor 100% there those are all great and exactly what you're saying right it's it's to help people understand that you're never starting at the bottom and it's important to kind of get to know yourself so you know at least in what area of real estate or how you're going to use those skills to push yourself and help yourself to get better in real estate um to give at least give that like level up for for everyone because a lot of a lot of people think that it's you're starting from zero and it's like no you have skills but you know then it's also you got to get learning on the real estate side too <laughs> exactly exactly so even before you know you start the understanding the fundamentals of real estate you have picked up lot of skills which will be helpful in your skill you know like some people have experience in raising capital they have a financial background or good uh, construction background so you just have to identify the skills that are there and you know just fill up the additional things that you need to pick up so it's like a continuous journey so you're never as you rightly said you're never starting at a zero you know you have already achieved lot of things 100% completely agree and now so getting to the actually my other question that's going to get to is um so what kind of changes as you've been going through your journey what kind of changes have you had to make in yourself to be able to you know get to where you are uh, in your real estate portfolio because like that you've grown it quite a bit so and in a short period of time mm -hmm. so you've had to adapt and change to be able to do this so curious on what kind of changes you had to do in yourself right so one of the thing you know uh, which alfonso uh, says is you know get comfortable with numbers so before you know naturally it was a job and we were not dealing with such big numbers you know so so that used to scare me a lot uh, so the first was about getting comfortable with the numbers uh, because these numbers are big and scary but then next time when you Uh, do a deal that number suddenly becomes achievable and then you are working on the next one so for example like you know one of my first deal i had to prepare a check of 80000 uh, so that itself gave me sleepless nights but then next deal was much more bigger than that so you know i got comfortable uh, then next challenge was raising 500k for one of the deals so which me and my partner uh, raised so eventually you need to challenge yourself and you know scale that's one second was about getting comfortable of stepping outside your neighborhood so uh, i'm based in ontario uh, where this market has certain advantages and disadvantages like every other market uh, but just because i was there i did not want to restrict myself over there so what i did there are certain uh, markets like alberta new finland and uh, new brunswick um, so i started exploring these markets and tapping the best of their provinces and building the team as well so we need to start looking outside the neighborhood as well uh, again once you do a comparative study and then you still are investing in your neighborhood that's good but keep your options broad and then choose the best option so you know stepping out of your neighborhood that's the second and the third thing is belief in investing in education like i'm part of several programs uh, because i see the value in it like i'm not focused on the investment amount but mostly it's about what can i get so you know some program has a good mentor another has a great community uh, so just one it just takes one good thing and it pays off for your investment rest everything is a bonus so that's the thing you know these are the main things so it's mainly about your mind uh, marsin says you know like uh, you can learn all the fundamentals and everything but you know if your head space is not working right you will not be able to take the action so that's the most important piece i would say everything all the mindset that you have 
that's the most important thing 100% completely agree and it is true and i think even just even what you're indirectly saying is like when you're getting involved in anything i think finding that positive in anything that you do really helps to like that take advantage of okay you know this part is really good for this so you take advantage and use it for that and same thing others may have something different instead of going from the negative cuz i feel like i've seen that actually happen with some communities especially some that i've been a part of yeah. where people were so upset about it and i kind of find it funny cuz i think in my sense like i i saw the things that weren't working but i also actually saw it actually like propelled me quite a bit even though there were some things that just weren't working and i think it's that view uh that lens that you put on when you're doing anything is to just take the positive and and use as much as you can because in anything to be honest i feel like there's always there's always going to be the good and the bad and um because i mean we're all different people and there's going to be things that you know i love that you're just like oh my god this is terrible and vice versa right, right. and but we are at least going to be picking the things that work for us and and taking advantage of those kind of things so i kind of just want to look because it's not like that's what you're saying and yes. and i think that was that's like a very important point that you were making right like no point in cribbing about anything because you know that is consuming your time and energy as well so why mm-hmm. not pick up few things good things from a particular experience uh, learn what didn't work well and you know move on to the next one and try to fill up the gap so it's always about how you are evolving using the opportunities and people around you and helping them along the way as well 100% agree especially like exactly what you're saying right because that th- this in itself teaches you in things about yourself what you don't like what you do like and and all these things can um involve so many different things like you may even teach you for example okay how to hire someone for some, for for example yeah. or, or how to find partners because you just you're learning from your experiences so i feel like it's great to have that positive attitude because i think you'll learn a lot more from uh from maintaining that positive attitude and understanding why you, what it is exactly what you didn't like about it and not being like oh it's a person but like mm-hmm. what about it you know what exactly was the issue right um so you know how to improve that for or pick better or do better for the future right like the more we get into specifics like you know like okay if something is bothering you what exactly is bothering you or if something is working when what was so that you know you can double down on the and it it applies same in the real estate as well for example now if you are in any market or any transaction that you are doing uh it will have either a good experience bad or a mix you know so keep identifying those things so that the next transaction because you know in real estate every day we are learning something new and uh, you just have to uncover your experiences share with the people uh, and everyone should grow together that's very important 100% and i mean this applies even to the projects right in our projects we have the good the bad and the ugly yeah, <laughs> we have to learn from all of them exactly you know <laughs> everything has and real estate also has like you know ugly phases so you have to go through it there is no escaping like people feel there is a route you know which is going to be smooth and they continue to wait and find for that but there is no uh you know a smooth path uh it mm-hmm. will be a shorter path out of the two but you know you have to go through the stress pain uncover your learnings and keep moving forward 100% well said. And that being said, so you're talking about now expanding and or I mean that you have mm-hmm. been out into other provinces. Yeah. And so how have um you've been able to like conquer the your fears or what do you do to help like reduce those fears when going into a place where you can't, you know, in a second like let's say go drive 5 minutes and let's say get into the property to check it if there's an issue what what have you done to kind of help soothe those those fears yes 
तो आई थिंक द एडवांटेज ऑफ लॉन्ग डिस्टेंस इन्वेस्टिंग यू नो इट फोर्सेस यू टू यू नो बी मोर स्ट्रिंजेंट अबाउट द थिंग्स सो फर्स्ट यू नो वी डू द यूजुअल एनालिसिस ऑफ द नंबर्स देन ऑल द ड्यू डिलीजेंस पैरामीटर सो इवन दो वी कैन नॉट फिजिकली गो देयर uh i and the, this is this is where the importance of networking you know is very helpful so we identify people who are knowledgeable and trustworthy and then start taking their references and connections uh and start building the team so that you know they can do uh, the necessary things like the right walk throughs uh, then the mortgage all those things uh the second thing is very much proactiveness is needed if you are not interested about your project no one else is right so and this is a key thing when you are if the project is under contract that's where the maximum you know timelines are there and the second phase is the stabilization of the property so during these time i make sure i'm directly uh, engaging through phone email and maybe through dropbox whatever possible ways so it's a mix of in person through the power team that you are building uh, on the boots on the ground and all the analytical skills that you can do as an investor you know giving them feedback analyzing asking the right questions so these are the things that i do to tap into other provinces mm-hmm. and yeah i think and especially i think a great point that you pointed out which i feel like actually is a problem that a lot of people have is that being proactive you know exactly what you're saying you know if you're not if you're not if you don't care about yeah. it <laughs> your teams are going to care about it and i think that is very very true and um and i just wanted to reiterate that because that is that is a, that is exactly that's very true that that exactly that happens right and there have that's, been cases like uh, where you know there were not responses coming up uh there are delays but you have to step in because that's the main role you know being proactive and taking ownership of it making sure what are the roadblocks and how you can support and mm-hmm. give them a slight push uh, so that the work gets done uh, and that is very important mm-hmm. 100% yeah great points and what about so mindset shifts so i cuz I, i feel like even for example uh culturally you probably had mindset shifts that even impact um even same thing even real estate and just coming to canada and like trying to uh, learn all this i'm curious on did you feel any even mindset shifts culturally and how like how that impacted you here yes so one of the mindset shift which i had was uh i always believe i thought that a human being can just be part of two or maximum three properties in their lifetime uh but then as i started exploring i saw that's not the case so then i thought okay people like us also can have a good portfolio a healthy portfolio uh so that was the first mindset sh- mindset uh, change the second one was as i said about the numbers because uh, people get scared so these are the common pain points that i have seen in myself and many others like me uh the third thing is about reaching out to people you know they are, you know it's very important that like i am not very open but still whatever way i am there i'm trying to add value and talk to people it can be through a one on one zoom call or a networking event or uh, adding a value added post so whatever things you are comfortable plus little bit uncomfortable you have to start reaching out and uh, expose yourself to the community because if people don't know you how will they be able to do business with you right so mm-hmm. these things are very important mm-hmm. so for example now that you say that was then social media or let's say coming on these types of shows or talking about what you do was that something of a huge mindset shift for you to actually be sharing this kind of information let's say publicly yes absolutely the these platforms are extremely important because that's how you can add value to the masses inspire 
people and also share your story and even learn from them you know like there have been so many great feedbacks i have received because i shared my story and or maybe i shared my pain point and even i got so many great suggestions from people so the mm-hmm. platforms are here for a reason you know to gain visibility to share your story to connect with people Mm-hmm. so definitely it is a uh, and must it's not optional anymore mm-hmm. but i mean what i meant was was this something that you were used to like you are always open and sharing or was this something like was this something that was let's say a mindset shift for you where you had you you exactly like you knew the reasons and you started was it right. was it something like so in my, my case like i have done uh, quite a bit of public speaking but not the kind of uh, you know these kind of interviews so yes this was a mindset mind, mindset change for me and so what exactly then helped you realize that like this this is a change you needed to do and something that let's say, or not even really much of change but like a leveling up that you had to do because like you said you're public speaking but it is a little different yes. so what what exactly made you realize that it was something that you had to do to to level up so again it it's all about so real estate is you know people do work with people it's not so building is one thing but again the transactions are happening between people right mm-hmm. so and again these are uncomfortable things but you know the more you practice anything the better you become so like one of this weekend i was part of a panelist uh, speaker in one of the multi family uh, workshop naturally it was uncomfortable but you know you have to go through that uncomfortable so you know it takes some time uh, but then you start becoming comfortable so that was the mindset shift mhm awesome that's great and so now um and if you would like to share what your like 5 to 10 year goal is but with that with what your goal is what types of things are now you changing right now to be able to achieve those big big goals that you those big you know 5 10 year goals yes. that you have yes so my 5 10 year goals now like as i'm building the portfolio uh, so my my fear limit or comfort limit is 6 to 12 unit uh buildings so so that's where i'm comfortable at so now my next goal is to you know stretch 12 units and above you know everyone has their own you know like uh, one of my mentor doesn't even look properties below 100 units because he has reached that stage so so my next uncomfortable or 5 10 year goal is to start adding multi family units which are 12 to 25 or even 50 now for that the mindset shift which are needed will be the fundamentals remain the same but now because the scale is going to increase and the capital is going to increase uh i need to tell myself one thing that you know this is possible uh because without that you cannot grow and it, it may look very common that you know but everything is happening in your mind if you say that you can do it you know you will start seeing ways of doing it and if you say you know i cannot do it you will always start looking at the things which will not work for you like yesterday i was in one of the very good uh, session so one of my friend closed the 32 unit multi family so which was a big leap for them where the seller was first not uh, agree so his mindset what you know he was told us you have to think on your head that you can close this deal and that vibes has to go to the seller as well so that is something that i'm going to implement now and keep telling myself because everything starts from the mindset mm-hmm. so now, mm-hmm. now because these are bigger than what i have done so far the, there is a constant chirping in my head that you know it it's tough you cannot do it so i need to start conditioning my mind to say that you know no this is possible you have to stretch and start looking for solution rather than the problems mm-hmm. so that is the thing uh, that i am going to focus on that that's 
great. I love that you said that because that is exactly what it is that we all need to do is exactly what you're saying. You know, if we're telling ourselves, no, we can't do it or we can't get this done, exactly what you said, we're going to be giving, we're going to be showing ourselves the options of how we can't do this and yes. how we can't get it done. Because right. our mind is there just to prove us right. right. <laughs> you exactly. know? Exactly. Like, if I can give one example, like uh, this December, my partner and I, we were working on the eight unit New Brunswick project where we had to raise like half a million dollars. Never done before for us, uh, at least for me. me. And this was on the time, you know, December, Christmas time where all our investor connections are either in Florida or some cruise. So that, that is the toughest time where you can, you know, get hold of people because and naturally you have to respect their time too, right? Uh, I was still blessed that, you know, people were responding that, you know, they were, but that was the toughest time. And we had never done that kind of uh, capital raising before. Uh, and it was, it was scary for us. Uh, but then we focused only on few things. Okay, if this did not work, okay, what next? What next? So you have to constantly tell yourself, okay, what is the solution? Who is the person who can help you? So we were always focusing on finding out those who, and then we were able to successfully close the pro project, raise a significant amount of uh, funds, which we had not done before. Uh, so that was a great learning experience. So you have to always, find what who you know there is a great book uh, who not how uh, which is exactly true you, know, you have to always find out who can help you uh, and you know you will start moving forward mm -hmm. yeah that's a great point and and it just also shows that even another thing that you're alluding to is that you're not giving up right it's just like okay this problem happened someone could take it a failure and be like i just can't even raise capital yeah. but your thinking is okay this didn't work what went wrong and what do i need to do to improve this or like you said who can i talk to to make this better or talk to the right person that will be able to give me what i need right right and and all these groundwork, you know, like talking to people, investing in the community, reaching out to network, adding value to people, these gives you these give you surprising experiences. Like uh, there was one of my senior mentor. Uh, he knows the kind of work I'm doing. You know, the positivity we share. Not to brag about me, but I'm just trying to come to a point. So he knew about uh, one of our deal and he just gave a quick reference and that reference turned out to be one of our biggest investor like they we haven't met each other but you know it's all connected coming from a right reference and you know we are part of the same community and he has seen my work the way we do so the point here is you never know when you know just one slight push can take you to a very great success. So just keep doing what you can do. You know, it is improving yourself, adding value to people, being part of great community and spreading your positivity. That's, these are the certain traits. There is no magic recipe here, right? These are the certain traits you constantly need to apply. 100%. And it's really funny because it sounds so easy. Yeah. Yeah. But then we see, like you can see around, or even we see it in ourselves that will, you know, sometimes fall into these little traps that don't work. And it's just kind of funny to see that, right? Yeah. Because it's like, really, it's very <laughs> easy, you know? <laughs> right. You know, like, you know, when you start uh, putting in a lot of effort, few things, uh, you know, start becoming easy. So you have to make it easy. Nothing is, you know... Uh, given out easy in this world especially if you know it's of a great prestige or a great rewarding thing but if you start constantly pushing working hard um, slowly things start becoming very uh, easy or 
unconsciously you start behaving in that way 100% and and i think it like if we all start actually when we start bringing that awareness to the things that we do yeah i think we start realizing that majority of it is our mind is making it hard for yes. us yes. and it's not really the actual task i think it's more the stress that we put onto ourselves about thinking about it that actually yes. makes it so terrible and uh and then it's just kind of like learning to relax from that Correct. and you know and just be like okay let's just get it done or let's do this and uh our minds definitely like to i feel like play a lot of tricks on us <laughs> to right. try to get us not to do exactly. things right that that yeah. are out of our comfort right. zone <laughs> and those stress like the way we had good debt and bad debt right there is good stress and bad stress too so when i have seen that you know when you are working uh on deals uh, and all these things the kind of rush uh and the positive energy rush and the way you are meticulous about your time that's amazing that's amazing so those days you are so focused you are so productive with your time and efficiency so the more you do things which uh, pushes you forward like i think uh, i read saw one of the videos of grand cardon where you know he says if you don't schedule the right things you will start filling your time with garbage right so maybe it's not in the exact words but that was the his mate so what he says that you know start scheduling things which will take you forward so that is mm-hmm. very important so whichever things uh, in real estate or be it anything that you like the more you schedule, schedule those things you will see that you know your week like now what i do is i start scheduling networking calls with people in the evening i am learning few things and everything i put in my calendar earlier i was not doing those things um, so and what happens is once you start seeing your calendar and when you revisit you see that okay at least some of the great experiences you have done and this also helps you in posting very valuable content so what i do now is i start going through my calendar what were my key takeaways and start connecting people with each other start sharing the knowledge so what has happened is you are learning putting good time and also putting lot of valuable content on the social media so many people because they ask me right like i don't know what to put but these are the things you know what are the things you are doing what are your takeaways who can you connect with other person connect people help them in achieving their goals and i'm sure you will do well 100% all amazing points and it is very true cuz either from helping people like you may learn something from it that's something i feel like especially when you're giving out knowledge or they're asking questions I feel like from there sometimes the way they even ask the question you may have never, never even thought of it in that that way and it makes you think like oh you know and it like pulls out things you're like oh, okay you know that I would do this for whatever way but it's just uh the people's different points of view can even just help you out exactly. or same thing like you bring a connection to someone that you know helps them and then you know in the future all of a sudden maybe that other person connects with you or something you know something that like something like it's always like helping other people will always somehow it comes back to you in some way or another it doesn't even have to be from the same person but it's just it's just like you just, like all that support that you give to others comes back in a certain way right and you know when people ask you questions it's good because you say hey wait a minute this is something i can improvise on so you go back start researching and not only you have helped that person you have helped yourself as well so mm-hmm. people ask you great questions you come up with great answers everyone is winning along the way 100% it's yeah and you just get to see different points of view because you may know the right. answer right. right it's more of the fact of i feel like it's more of the fact of they may shed some light of something that you just never thought of um with relation to that so it is i think I, it's it is i i to be honest i love telling people you know like sharing my knowledge with people because exactly that right it's just like 
you get to learn people's perspectives right. you get to learn their experiences i mean that's the point of these shows right yeah. <laughs> you get to learn about people's experiences um and hear about different perspectives because we are all very different people right. and we yeah. are you know like you just learn so many different things from all the different minds right right because one person cannot know everything like uh, that is one of the again one of the mindset change uh you don't have to know everything but you have to be surrounded with people who are filling those gaps there are professionals for every uh, you know roles and responsibilities so if you start learning each and everything god knows when you will be you know uh, a specialist so <laughs> choose your interest area and you know partner with people who have their uh, strength skills and that's how you make a strong power team 100% great point any other changes that you wanted to discuss that um you're going through right now or thinking of having to go through to you know level up to your next nice big goal yeah so that's the main thing you know uh, the bigger goals uh, i'm just trying to condition because now for when you asked about the next 5 10 years so i see myself going for uh, multi family continue for a bigger multi family units in canada and us that will be one of my uh, focus then i'll be adding the airbnb uh, short term rental uh, so i'm preparing myself in the short term rental space so here few things which will be like uh, for example the short term rental one of my mental blocks is in the arbitra side like why would someone give the property to me you know that's my mental block so i have been taught through some of my mentors uh, how to overcome those you know like always see what are the benefits for them so it's not about you it's about them be it in capital raising or buying properties or arbitrage or anything so that's one of the mental shift i need to focus on uh, in the multi family space my uh, bigger deals the my mental shift is how can i raise bigger capitals you know like 200k uh, per per investor so far mm-hmm. you know i have 150k 180k like those uh so now it will be like per investor i have to uh, though i need to work with bigger in so what are the things that they look in a deal or what are their criteria uh, that will be something so this is the things that i'll be focusing on in the next 5 10 years that's awesome and that was also that is a those are great points because <laughs> sorry yeah. we're always having to change and adopt adapt and it's so important and actually I'm going to go through some cuz I feel like some people have said things uh but I want to go up more I know there was one that was about and it's just even though it's not really related to transformation time but since we're ending and we'll do a little bit of real estate talk for yeah. you guys yeah <laughs> was uh I guess that you're about you're starting to or you are investing in or looking into investing in Mexico someone was saying Mexico and somewhere else Uh, and is that is that uh, right mexico and costa rica not yeah these are not my immediate but yes those are in the pipeline so there are uh, my goal uh, is to eventually also have uh, in these countries the vacation properties uh, more on the luxury side uh, but yes that's there but not in the immediate plan so my immediate plan is more to work on the arbitrage understand how those work uh the second will be the multi family space like that's going to be my core focus so i'm planning to expand in the us and then later um if i'm comfortable with these two then probably buying fun properties in mexico costa rica those are in the bucket list but not on immediate priority right now mm-hmm. Oh okay okay. Yeah, yeah. And so just question for arbitrage you're saying that you want to be the person doing the arbitrage, yeah. right? Yes, exactly. So I can actually I was going to say I feel like I can answer yeah. that question for you why people would want to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I would love uh, to. Love. But it's not. I mean, I'll give my point of view. Yeah. Um just because like that we all have different point of view. So in my point of view, let's say 
why I would want to hire someone like yourself, let's say, to do it is one, I don't want to do the work. Yeah. <laughs> the main time. one. Same, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, that would be me. I would feel like that's like the main one. Usually it's like one. And the other one is um, depending on how you're doing it, because I think there's different approaches to it. Or I guess because yeah. our arbitrage is actually they don't do the lease agreement right like they're just hiring you because uh, if it is the lease agreement approach because i forget which way which which way it is but i know there's some that do lease agreement like they'll do the lease agreement and then they take care of the whole thing for you it kind of goes let's say with my model right like i for example only do long term tenants yeah. tenants i am not like an airbnb or i'm not uh, short term rentals like i am full on I just want to buy property, like, it, and it depends on the person's mentality, right? Because, for example, for me, my mentality is, like, I, like, actually have a lot of fun going through the process of buying properties and, like, doing the negotiations and figuring out how to get these properties, how to get, like, satisfy the owners, you know, like, that whole process of the buy, for me, is a lot of fun. So let's say for me, that's why, like, long-term is better, or even, like, mainly, like, my main thing is even private lending is because that side of things, I want it to be as passive as I can make yeah. it, right? Um, so that I feel like if that helps you is why people may want to go into that arbitrage side because um, either maybe they get benefits also from it because I know there's like so many different ways of doing yeah. it on the Airbnb side, but, uh, you know, may, like that, maybe they're, you know, like, hey, just take it. As long as I get a, get a rent, good rent, rent exactly. on it, then I'm happy or vice, or whatever. There's so many different approaches. It's like, can't even say. But, you know, like, there are always, always benefits. And I, and I just want to share my point of view because um, I feel like that's a big one for a lot of people. It's mainly the hassle-freeness of it. Yes, that that's exactly one more point. Another few things what I have picked up. So arbitrage, what I understand is, you are right, like, you know, someone is looking for a steady long-term in income but they don't want to manage or you know do the things or spend time on it uh so that's where you know you can have uh, those those kind of people and partner with them and you know work on those uh the second thing is if you see the way the value you know of the property is maintained a regular tenant if it is there you know they will definitely not keep it in the best conditions so you always keep it proper. Uh, also the bonuses, professional staging, all the things, photography, those things also come to the, so whenever also, let's say you don't want to renew the lease, you have the property in the best kept condition. Plus you get the staged staging done or the professional photography already included for you. That's for you to keep. So if you are planning to sell or also you know put it to for someone else that's an advantage so these are some of the value that uh, i have at least identified so far that's awesome and i just wanted to give some shout outs because i know rajan also said that he loved to hear your processes and then nancy was saying you can definitely reach out to her yeah. if you, you have you know, anything for arbitrage so i just wanted to say that and i just wanted to thank you so much someone for coming on and sharing your personal development journey and mindset shifts that you've gone through thanks so much for coming on no problem thank you so much it was a pleasure awesome and if you guys loved what you heard he is tagged he will be tagged on this so if you want to follow him you can definitely come on here he'll be tagged on on this video so you can follow him if you're not following him already and if you love what you hear on my shows and you're not following me well you better get on mine and also follow me too because uh, we have these every thursday we were having either transformation time or right behind the scenes so if you have fun hearing a, hearing us chit chat then definitely follow me also. So thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.